I realized I'm somewhat of an impulse shopper, so instead I decided to keep track of all the things that I wanted to buy, and we're gonna decide if I should buy them now a month later. Hi friends, welcome back to my channel or welcome to it if you've never been here before. I appreciate you joining us. My name is JC, I like to do story times, chit chats and rants on this channel. But today I have I have a little, a little special video. I don't know if it's special or more so I wanted to do it, but I have been committed to saving money these past couple of months. I am technically unemployed as the cool kids say, self-employed, I prefer self-employed. But as a result of that, I need to penny pinch a little bit. However, that has been somewhat of a struggle because I recently discovered I have a bit of a shopping problem. <laughs> and a problem it is. <laughs> I don't really have a shopping problem. I definitely have an inclination to use retail therapy to make myself feel happier, but I can't really do that in these times. So what I decided to do was anytime I felt the urge to buy something or even the thought of, you know what, I wanna purchase this. I instead made an Amazon list of all of the things throughout the month that I've wanted to buy, but didn't. And the goal is by the end of the month to look at all of those purchases that I almost made and realize, you know what, I don't really need those, or maybe, I'll be buying them all live on the air right now. I hope not, I don't have the money for that. <laughs> so for this video, we're just going to go through the list of all of the things that I wanted to buy and why, and whether or not I would actually purchase them now a month later in hindsight. We are now in September, it's spooky season, it's fall, and I'm realizing I probably don't really need any of these items. Now, some of these items aren't exact. It's not like I would exactly buy these pair of boots or this thing of technology. It's more so just the idea and the concept. And if I were to buy it, I'd probably do more research on the specific one. So keep that in mind. It's not the exact, exact product I would purchase. I'm blabbering. Let's just get onto the list of some of the things I wanted to buy in August, but didn't. All right, I'm off to the side so I can put the lovely items right here next to me. But the first category we're going to go over is all of the beauty and fashion things that I felt inclined to buy this month. So the first item are these mule boots is what I call them. They're basically like backless boots. And I really wanted these because I have a lot of pairs of boots, but I hate how they, they gap around your ankle when you wear dresses or things that show off the rest of your leg. And so I wanted like that boot fall style, but without it going up your ankle, if that makes sense. And I really liked these ones and I'm gonna, I'm gonna do some outfits this fall and see if I can make the boots work, but I do really want a pair of these, but I also have so many pairs of shoes that I don't wear, and I fear that these are just gonna be another one of them, but this was the first item, and I'm gonna mark it down as a maybe. Ooh, so the next item is actually a plunging bra. So I have been <laughs> experimenting with my fashion. As you guys know, I've been renting my clothes and I've been getting a lot of lower cut things, and it's been fun to wear, it's been sassy. Um, however, I have a very large bosom area and I do not have functional bras for a lot of those plunging necklines. I end up having to wear like a bandeau and then it feels like, I feel like a middle schooler when you had to put camis underneath everything just to seem uh, moderate, moderate, mod modern. Oh my God, what's that word? Modest. You guys, my brain has not been working lately and it's because I don't have a plunging bra. <laughs> so I was looking at some plunging bras as well as boob tape. So I have never tried boob tape. I've heard amazing things and horrible things like it burns your skin and it rips off your booby skin and leaves scars for forever. And I'm like, well, that's terrifying. So I will get one of these because I do need some type of solution for all these plunging necklines because I do want to wear those sassy jumpsuits. Um, I think I might go boob tape first because it is a cheaper alternative and if that just doesn't work for me, then I'll try a more plunging bra that really has some lift and I'll spend a little bit more dollars. So boob tape is a yes. And similarly, I am a huge fan of shapewear. I love wearing shapewear under anything tight because I feel like it really compresses me and smooths everything out and it makes me feel more confident, okay? And I modeled for Honey Love, which is a very popular shapewear brand, and it's pretty expensive, but I did find some alternatives and dupes on Amazon that have really great reviews. I probably will end up buying this because recently I went to a wedding and I wore my old shapewear 
and it was rolling down the entire time. And then I had like this line right here. It just didn't go high enough or low enough on the thighs. And I was like, I really just need to upgrade my shapewear so that I don't even have to think about it because the entire wedding, you guys, I was having to like lift it up from the outside of my dress. I was hyper aware of it in all of my reflections. And I just want something that would be nice and high waisted so I don't even have to think about or worry about it rolling down. So I will probably get this one but not right now because I have no special events coming up where I'm going to be wearing tight dresses. So I think I'll get this one closer to when I want to wear something a little sassier. So I'm going to put this one down as a maybe, but probably yes. <laughs> I do also have some Etsy finds in here because I love Etsy. I love supporting small businesses and they just have more of those personalized, custom and unique items. This is one of them. It is a pair of egg earrings that I saw. I don't need a pair of egg earrings for $20, but I've had it saved in my wish list for so long because I just think they're so cute and silly and so me. I love eggs. I eat them every day. If you guys follow the vlogs, I say it in almost every vlog that I'm having my toastless avocado toast. Uh, and I just love eggs, but these ones are still gonna be a no for me because I just don't need $20 earrings right now. Ugh, this is another one that I'm like, I don't need it, but I want it. So you probably can't tell by the photo, but what these are is it is a slap on feather bracelet. So what you do is you slap them on the ends of long shirts and they add a little bit of flair. They add a bit of 90s fashion to it. And I'll also put here a TikTok of where I saw these because as soon as I saw these, I was like, <gasps> I want those because it's kind of like taking a shirt that you already have and then making it sassy for a night. Now these are $10. Um, these are gonna be a no for me because I don't need them right now. Again, everything fashion wise, I have all the clothes and shoes that I absolutely need. So these are all wants, but these are super cute. And if I ever feel like my closet is getting too stale, I'll probably buy these so I can zhuzh up my long shirts for a little bit. <laughs> The next item, now this is probably the first item looking back that I'm like, I don't need this. I got a hat recently from my dad. I go to soccer games with my parents and we have season tickets and a scalper was like selling these hats and I was like, ooh, I like that. And my dad bought it for me. And ever since then I was like, wait, I kinda, I kinda like hats. I never wore hats because I have too much hair and a big head, honestly. Actually, don't look, I'm sweating too much. But I see so many Pinterest fashion aesthetics that I love with these Instagram or influencer hats. And I'm like, I want those because it's just another fashion piece that ties the outfit together. But honestly, I just don't think I have the fashion sense to pull off these hats. I wouldn't know how to use them properly. And I think it's the first of them that I'm looking at this of like, eh, I don't actually want this after all. And I'm glad I didn't buy it because it absolutely would have been an impulse buy that would have been sitting in my room for two months without ever being touched. So this one's a no from me. And the last of the beauty items, I think I'm still gonna buy these. So what these are, these are synthetic crochet hair braids. So think of it like extensions, but without any type of cliff to it or kind of end to it, just like a long piece of hair. So what I would use these for is I would braid them into my hair to make long braids. Now they're obviously for more traditional African-American style braids. However, I don't know how to braid my own hair that way. I would do more of a French braid style. And so I've recently been doing French braids as a hairstyle and I kind of love it but when I do it my hair just seems so thin and my hair's not actually that long it's pretty short so if I were to practice and add these to my long braids I can go out with some sassy long French braids and really show them off um, it would take a lot of practice because I haven't ever done that before but I think it'd be a fun new hairstyle for me to try it's also a really good protective hairstyle and these are only I think less than $20 so it might be a better alternative than buying clip-in extensions which would probably be easier but I don't know, it just seems like something I would wanna try as a fun new hairstyle. So these are definitely one of those in the future, yes, but right now it's just a maybe. The next section will be all of the tech items that I almost impulse purchased. Although these wouldn't be so much of an impulse because they are obviously gonna be a lot more expensive, but just some of the tech things on my wish list. But before we get into this section, I would just like to ask you guys to like this video and subscribe if you aren't already subscribed. It really helps me out and I would love for you to join us for other future fun videos. With YouTube in general, I think I wanna do more of my style videos incorporated with the story times that you guys like. You know, one for me, one for you. This is definitely one of those styles. So if you like that, a little bit of everything, then consider subscribing and joining us for future videos. But for the first tech item we have, ah uh, yes, so this is a plug-in microphone that plugs into to your iPhone. So I do have a vlog channel. I'll link it down below. And I don't want to buy a vlog camera ever. I think they're so cumbersome and I would feel a lot more shy going out and around and vlogging with a full-on camera. 
So I use my phone. It's decent enough. It gets the job done. However, what happens is that when you vlog on your phone, I'll vlog in selfie mode this way and be like, hey guys, what's up? But then I'll turn the camera around and vlog something out there and be talking. The microphone's on different sides. You're getting two different sound qualities. And so when I go back and edit it, it sounds like I'm in two different rooms and it switches back and forth all the time. And it kind of really bothers me. It probably doesn't bother anybody else, but I'm like, dang, I wish that sound was consistent. So I found this plug-in microphone. And the best part is that you can move the microphone front to back. So that way, if I were to flip the camera around, I could just now move the mic and have the same exact sound quality. Now, I don't know if I need this for $40. I didn't really do a ton of research into how great the quality is, but I put it on my wish list for, you know, in case I win the lottery someday, I can just buy all my tech items. So this one is a no for right now, but in the future, I could see it being pretty useful. This is another one that I don't need probably ever really. It is a gimbal stabilizer. So what it is, is you put it on like a tripod and it's a handheld tripod, but it stabilizes the camera. So I could be super shaky. Like I've been caffeinated all day on Red Bulls and espressos, um, and it holds the camera still, it stabilizes it. I don't think I'm super shaky. Again, I don't think my vlogs are like top-notch, aesthetically pleasing, beautiful, super highly viewed vlogs to warrant a gimbal. But again, I put it on my wish list and if I get a spare $90 someday and my vlog channel goes through the roof, I might consider this. But right now, it's a no. I am so glad I didn't buy this item because now a month later, I'm like, you know what? I don't want it anymore. What this is, it's a tripod attachment and it's a face tracking tripod. So essentially you put it on top of the tripod, you put your phone on it, and if you move, it follows your face. Now the reason I wanted this was because I was like, you know what? I'm gonna start doing more effort and work into my Instagram. I wanna start making reels where I'm doing those cool fashion reels while I'm walking, and then all of a sudden becomes like all these different photos, and it's all about like my outfits and the scenery. And this would track my face so that way I wouldn't need another person filming for me, but it still gives the motion and movement that I'm looking for. Um, that's not my style of Instagram. I realized I don't like making that kind of content. And also, why am I trying to make fashion content? I, I'm not good at that. I just told you guys that. Sure, I rent my clothes and I have pretty outfits sometime. Uh, follow me on Instagram if you aren't already. But that's just not the kind of content I like to make. It's not the content I like to watch. So why would I buy this this little gimbal-y thing if I'm never gonna use it and find a need for it? So this one's a definite no from me. The next item, again, I wouldn't necessarily purchase from Amazon, but I have wanted an iPad for like a year now. I don't need an iPad, you guys. I just think sometimes I'm editing photos or I'm editing my TikToks or Reels or I'm trying to get really fancy or just like all these little creative projects and I'm like, man, I wish I had an iPad right now. That would make things so easier. But honestly, I think I really want an iPad because I'm so addicted to my phone that I'm getting carpal tunnel <laughs> swiping and scrolling all day that an iPad would honestly just make things easier on my hands and my eyes. Um, I don't need an iPad. I don't need to be spending $800 on another tech device when my phone and laptop do the exact same thing. However, I have been wanting an iPad. I probably still will get one one day. So this one is like a no for not a very long time. However, the next few items are iPad related. So I just wanted to show them for the day that I do get an iPad. So obviously I would want an Apple pen uh, because I like to, again, edit things and, and draw and I'm, I don't even have good penmanship, but I wanna like, I wanna make things more personalized and customizable. So I absolutely would get an Apple pen. And then over on Etsy, they have the cutest cases for all things iPad. I found this one and I had to save it. So this is a composition iPad case. So it looks like a composition book. So you put it in like your purse and it looks like you're smart with a little composition book, but it's like a digital composition book and it's pink and that's cute. And then you could also get it with a matching pencil case. So this is the case for the Apple pen. Tell me that's not the cutest thing ever. Sure, it's undigitalizing the Apple Pen. That's not a real word, but I just think it's cute. It brings it back down to basics and it's just, I don't know, it's fun, okay? So if I were to have an iPad and an Apple Pencil, these are what I would get. This one is slowly getting higher and higher on my priority list and that is a privacy screen. So I would not get this actual brand here at all because I actually think I did buy this brand. I bought one or two privacy phone like screen covers from Amazon and they sucked. They absolutely did the job of protecting your privacy. So essentially you can only see what's on your phone if you're looking at it directly. So somebody could be sitting right next to you and it's just a black screen for them. However, the ones that I've purchased, it pixelates my screen. Like you 
can see X's and squares everywhere and it looks like I'm looking at an old Game Boy and it like really defeats the purpose of why I use my phone. So that's why I've been iffy about getting a privacy screen protector. However, I use public transportation and I travel so much that it's becoming more of a necessity because I like to edit photos. And recently I was editing photos on the plane and I was like, oh shoot, I need to edit these swimsuit photos, but I don't want the guy next to me watching me edit me in a bikini. Jafiel, I might still try. No, I don't want to do any more cheap alternatives because those didn't work and I didn't like them. But these ones are going to be a yes for me. I just need to do more research on the right brand. So if you guys have any recommendations, let me know because I really need a privacy screen protector. And the last item on my tech wish list is some sort of silly novelty AirPods case. This is not a necessity. This is just like cute things I see on Etsy where I'm like, oh my gosh, those are so adorable and so silly and funny that I want them. Um, I don't need $12 iPad cases. However, some of these are super cute. Like the cup of noodles or the Starbucks one, even the avocado, the cheese. Oh, the cheese is cute. I don't need any of these but I have it saved for future reference in case I find a $20 bill on the ground and have nothing else in my life to spend it on but a silly pair of AirPod cases. I don't need it though, so it's a no. <laughs> Moving on to some quick travel items that I put on my wish list. One would be some type of cute, sophisticated weekender bag. This one is already gonna be a no from me a month later, and I'm glad I didn't buy this because it's one of those that like, I don't need, I have enough duffily bags to use as a carry-on for when I travel, but they're like from several years ago and they're brightly neon colored. And I'm like, I think I like more of the minimalist neutral type of things when I'm traveling. And I saw this one, I was like, ooh, that's pretty. I don't need it. I don't need to be spending $45 on another duffel bag when I have plenty that are functional and get the job done. So this one is a no. <laughs> However, I will need to get luggage soon. My luggage set is tearing apart. It is not working. And it's also, I've never liked it because it's actually a left-handed suitcase, which is really weird and not something you think about until after you buy it and everything feels so unnatural, but it is tearing apart. And even my family on my recent trip to Puerto Rico was like, you need a new luggage set. So I saved this one because I really like, again, the more neutral look to them. I don't know how white it would stay or if that's even a dumb idea to get a white suitcase, but I do like the hard shells. I do like it to have all the four wheels to spin around. And I think I might just ask for this for Christmas so that my parents can get it for me so that I don't feel like I'm spending over a hundred bucks on a new luggage set. But luggage will be in my future, but hopefully not from me. So I'm gonna put this as a no. And the last travel item is some type of personalized passport cover. This is one from Etsy that I really like. They have a ton on Etsy, but not ones that I've fallen in love with. This was the first one that I really liked because of how minimal it was. I really liked the little airplane in the corner and then just my initials at the bottom. Some of them are too word heavy or just too big on the actual imagery. And I just like how little and dainty these are. And it's also really important for me to be able to carry all my vaccination information so this one does have a sleeve for my vaccine card and then a separate sleeve for my passport. Um, again, I don't need to be spending $20 on this. It's purely an aesthetic wish list item. But, you know, if I really start going global next year and going international, I will want to treat myself to this and really be proud of all the traveling that I'm doing because I, I am trying. Uh, but this one's a no for right now. The last section of my wish list I will call the household and miscellaneous items. The first one is a utility knife or box cutter. Again, it wouldn't be like this $8 one, but I have been getting a lot more packages recently. I'm starting to receive PR, which is super cool. And I have no way to open these boxes. It's actually really embarrassing, like how long it takes me to try to rip open or cut open these boxes. I just need to get a good box cutter. Not this one, again, essentially, but I just need to find a good box cutter. So this one will be a yes from me. And of that same vein, because I've been getting a lot more packages, I am vlogging it a lot more and I'm throwing away all of these boxes. And I see that other vloggers, they get this like identity theft protection stamp and what it does, you just roll it over your address and your name. So that way if you are showing it on camera or you are throwing it away, people don't have all of your information and that way you can be like, look guys, let's see what's in this box without showing people where I live to come and murder me. Um, so this one is a no for right now, but I actually do think it's really smart. But for now, a Sharpie does the trick or just avoiding, you know, showing the camera is good enough for now. But I will get this eventually if the whole influencer thing really does take off. So this one is a maybe. Actually, no, this one's a no for now, but yes in the future. Do you guys ever get into like, super organizational mindsets where you're like, I need to organize this entire house and I need to do it right now. I was in one of those manic moods recently this month where I got a new set of drawers 
and by got a new set of drawers, I found it on the side of the road and I was like, hey, that's an Ikea Alex drawer. I want those. <laughs> so I put it in my room and I kind of redid my whole makeup and beauty setup with all these drawers, but I didn't really have like baskets and separated bins to use them in. And I did use some like old Dollar Tree ones that I have that do the trick, but it's not aesthetically pleasing. So I started doing my research on like separated organizer drawers and storage solutions. And you know, in hindsight, now that I've been doing it for a month now with the setup that I have, it's fine. I don't need to be spending over $20 on just plastic bins. What I have now does the trick, it's functional. Yes, I would love to upgrade in the future to make it more aesthetically pleasing and even more organized, but right now, it's fine. I don't need little plastic bins for $20, so it's a no for me. And of that same ilk, I have some things under my sink that like, whenever I need something in the back, I'm always like, ugh. This is so cumbersome trying to reach here. I need some type of drawer to pull these out. And so I had saved these like basket organizers that go under the sink so that way it's drawers. So you don't have to like reach back there. I'm just being lazy. I can reach back there. Everything fits in there as is. This would just make things easier. So this one's a no for me. Yes, it would make my life easier in the future, but considering I'm saving money, I don't need to be, I don't need to be buying this right now. So this one's a no. This one, <laughs> this one's kind of funny. Um, you probably can't tell what this is, but I have a stand-up shower and the tub is separate. So there is no ledge in my shower for me to put my leg up on when I want to shave my legs. And so what this is, it is a grip footrest simply for you to have to shave your legs. And I think it goes up and down so it's not like sticking out at all times. I've had this on my wish list for a while, but I just don't, I can't justify the price. Like I feel like $18 is a lot. And to be honest, I'm not really I'm not really shaving my legs all that much. Um, but this would be such an easy solution of like, oh nice, finally I have something to put my leg up on. Cause it is really weird to shave my legs standing up. I don't know. This one's a no for right now. I'm gonna keep it on my wish list cause one day I will buy it. But then again, one day I'll move and I'll have another ledge to rest my leg upon. But just kind of a silly thing that I've always wanted. And I was thinking about it again this month and I was like, should I just buy it? No, winter's coming. I won't need to shave soon. <laughs> Here's another Etsy find. Yes, they are gumball machines, but I would not be using these for gumballs. I recently started a new medication and I was kind of worried about remembering to take my medication because I have taken birth control my whole life and even then I'm not really good about taking it. Like I'll be like, oh shoot, I missed a couple of days. Pop, pop, pop. Uh, you can't really do that with medication. So I wanted something to remind myself to take my meds every day, but in a fun cutesy way. And so I saved these little gumball machines on Etsy. They're only five bucks and they look pretty small. Again, I didn't do all my research into how like big or tall these are, um, but I've been taking my medication for a month now and I just leave it on my counter and I go, oh, my medication. And now I remember to take it. So it hasn't really been an issue. It's not really a need for right now. And like, again, I'll just take medication like a normal person. So this one is a no for me. <laughs> and the last item is going to be so random, but it is fog juice. And you might be wondering, JC, what kind of cool cocktail is that? Or it's a pretty cool band name. Um, it's literally just the liquid you put inside a fog machine. So my dad gave me a fog machine recently. He gave me a fog machine and a disco ball because I guess his work offices were cleaning out their fun stuff and they're just giving things away. And he goes, do you want a fog machine? And I said, heck yes, I want a fog machine. I'll never turn down free things. Uh, I have no use for those, but I had no idea that you need specific fog juice to put in fog machine. It makes sense, but I don't know why I just thought it was like, water and then something happens, some sort of scientific chemical compound reaction happens and it creates the fog. Uh, no, you need fog juice. So this one is an absolute no right now because I have no reason to use the fog machine, but I might throw like a Halloween party or just some type of like get together so that way I can just use this fog machine and have a reason to buy fog juice. But right now, I don't need fog juice. I don't need a fog machine. So it's gonna be a no from me. But that's gonna be it for my wish list from this past month, I think. In hindsight, this was actually really insightful because I don't want almost any of those things anymore. None of them are immediate needs. All of them would have been absolutely impulse buys or just things for purely aesthetics and not actual functional necessities. And so I'm really glad I, do, I did this and I would encourage you guys to do this of just kind of start tracking the things that you wanna buy, wait a little bit and then after your mind kind of settles and realizes, hey, maybe I don't need this, then you save some money or you realize, oh shoot, I have an, an, a more immediate need for this time to hit that buy button, but you never know. But let me know some of the items on my list that maybe you think I should buy. Maybe you think I should treat myself or that I deserve. Or 
or let me know which ones you think are stupid and dumb and that should have never been on my wish list in the first place because the, the feather slap bracelets, yeah, I get it, I get it. <laughs> but I thank you guys so, 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 so much for watching. I will catch you in the future with some more story times and other fun videos. And I just appreciate you guys for watching either way, but I'll see you in the next one. Toodles! Holy crap, I am sweating. Even my upper lip is sweating. I didn't know I could sweat there. It's literally so freaking hot in LA. I need to towel off and dry off in between every single take. I think I did this in my last video too, because that's how much of a sauna my apartment is. <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah.